Hi, this is Amy, and we're going to work in this little section on the basics of using Gmail. <clears throat> so this is my Huntsville ISD Gmail account, and I want to show you how to do all the basic functions. So first we're going to write an email. Right up here in the top left we have a Compose button, so I'll click that. And now I'll type who I want to send the message to, and for our test today I'm going to email Cherie. When I start to type Cherie's name, you can see that anyone whose name starts with a CH or has a CH anywhere in it in the school district is going to pop up. What this lets me know is that I don't need to add people who are already a part of Huntsville ISD to my contacts in order to email them easily. They're all going to be there already. So I can either continue typing Cherie's email address or I can click her from the, the list as soon as I see the, her there. And now I'll type a subject to Cherie. And now right down here I'll type a message to Cherie. When I get ready to send the message I can click send right up here. If I decide not to send it, I can click Discard. Or if I want to save it and come back to it later, I can click Save Now right up here. Let's see how that function works. So I'll click Save Now and return to my inbox, which is where my new or unarchived messages will be. And if I want to go back and work on that email to Sharita again, I can click on Drafts and I can find the email that I'm sending to her. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and discard that message because I just said hi to Cherie. So I'll return to my inbox right over here. Now I want to show you how to deal with messages that you're finished reading. So let's say that um, someone sent me this, this email. Actually, I sent it to myself here about the default Gmail password for Huntsville ISD. Um, before I got this account working, I was putting that into my Outlook and it's synchronized over. But I'm finished with this email now. In the old model of using Microsoft Outlook on our server, we had a very limited space. We had to host it ourselves. And so when we were finished with an email, we hit delete. In this model, what we want to do is hit Archive. This is my Archive button right up here. When I hit this button, it doesn't mean that the email's gone forever like Delete does. It means that I've put it into, think of it as a giant box that can hold all of my old emails. The neat thing about this is that if I have an email conversation of Let's say um, I emailed someone, they email me back, I email them back again. All of those previous emails can come up together. I'm going to log into my personal account where I have more content and show you how that looks. This is my personal email account and I want to point out to you several email chains of messages here. So I'll open this one up so you can see what this looks like. So this is an email conversation between me and my techie friend David Malone. Uh, we write some blog artic articles together and um, he's applied to be a Google certified teacher. So here's a conversation. It has four messages. I'm going to open up now. This looks like one email but it's got a four out to the side and let's see how this goes. Alright, so here's the first email in the chain. David sent it to me two days ago. I replied to him. I said thanks. David replied to that email. He let me know he has another guest post that I can publish. And then I replied back to him. So what would have happened if I would have deleted the emails that David sent me in this chain is I would only be left with my own messages. And so this chain of emails might not make much sense anymore. This is why it's really better to archive emails rather than delete them so that we can always go back through those threads and see how those emails progressed through time. So I'm going to go back to my Huntsville ISD account now and I'm going to show you how I archive an email. I'm going to hit the checkbox next to it and I'm going to touch the archive button right up here at the top. And now I'm going to show you one more time how to get to all of those emails or maybe I haven't shown you at all yet. If I want to find all of my emails including anything I've archived I can go into the all mail button right down here. Let me show you how I got there. That can be kind of confusing. So at first I don't see it but when I roll my mouse down I see this option to look for more and then right down here I see all mail. So here are all of the mail message that I've ever messages that I've ever sent or received in this account. 
While we're here, let's take a look at another section down here that might be important to us. Let's look in the spam folder. So at first when we start using Gmail, sometimes we may get some mail messages sent to spam that shouldn't be there. So let's get one out and let's put it back into our mailbox where it should go. So it looks like this is probably not spam. I want to get my Eduphoria notifications for sure. So it says, why is this message in spam? I can read about that if I want. But what I really want to do is come right up here to the top and hit not spam. And I'm going to go through my messages and choose not spam on each of these messages that I actually want to keep. This will get better and better the more we use Gmail and the more we report when things are spam versus not spam. Actually, that one probably is, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the bulk email section. And uh, this one is not, so I'll click not spam. And now I should see all these messages back in my inbox, and there they are. So I know a lot of you guys enjoy using folders in your email account and you should see those folders moved over from Outlook in your account. I'm going to show you now how to make new folders if you choose to do that. So this email is one that I really want to keep. So I've opened it up and now at the top I see move to right up here. I have a folder set up already that's called inbox to keep. That one is from my Outlook account and I can go ahead and file the mail into that folder like this. I can just click this and it will go out of my inbox and now it's over here in inbox to keep. I'm going to show you a time when I wouldn't worry about creating a label and moving my mail into the a folder over here on the side. And that would be when I have emails that are from the same person or source. So the reason why I wouldn't create a folder called Eduphoria and move these emails into it is because Gmail search is so powerful. So what I would do if I wanted to see emails that had been generated from Eduphoria is I would come up to the search bar at the top and I would type in Eduphoria and I would hit enter or click the search bar. This would let me see any email that had been sent that had the subject of Eduphoria, had Eduphoria in the message anywhere, or was from the Eduphoria server. Now, if I just want to see emails that are from Eduphoria, then I would type from Eduphoria just like that. Let me revise this. From Eduphoria. And I would search like this. Now, these are all of the emails and email chains that I have gotten from Eduphoria. Remember, this four means these are four emails that have the same subject. So I can see all of them right here. So let's think for a minute about our contacts in our Huntsville ISD Gmail account. We already know that we don't have to add people in who are a part of Huntsville ISD, but what if we want to add someone in who is not part of our school district? Well, one way that we can do that is to just send them an email. So if I send uh, my husband, for example, an email, then his email address will be recorded and next time I start to type it in then it will automatically pop up but if I want to go further than that maybe I want to synchronize contacts on my phone and I want to see all that information I can come right up here to mail and toggle over to contacts and now I'll be able to add to my contacts so I'll type his name and click add and now let me add more details here. So I can put in his email address, his work phone, his mobile phone, and I can keep clicking and get more boxes. Every time I click, I get a new box. I can type in the address, I can put notes, and when I finish, I want to click Save right up here. So let me save that contact, and I can return to all my contacts, and you can see he's the only one I have in there right now. And when I get ready to go back to mail, I can toggle right up here back to my mailbox. Let's look now at how to customize your mail account. So I know that you're used to seeing Outlook in a certain way, and you might want to preserve some of those view settings that you've been used to. So let's go into your mail settings and see how we can set up a signature and do some customization like that. So we'll click our gear up in the top right, and now we'll click our settings. And first of all, we're already on the general tab, so let's scroll down and let's set up a signature. So right here in this blank is where you can type a signature. So you might want to pause this video for just a minute and type in an email signature for yourself. 
When you finish, you'll scroll to the bottom and click Save Changes. And then we'll move right on over to the Labs section. So let's take a look at the Labs. Here are some labs that I think you might like to take advantage of. The first one is called Default Text Styling. If you like to customize the text in your emails, you can change what the default text styling will be by turning on this lab and then returning to the General tab and setting up your default text. For example, if there's a certain font that you like to use, you can set that up. The next lab I'd like to encourage you to turn on is called Inserting Images. This lab will allow you to put images right into the email instead of just sending them as attachments. That's pretty handy. This next lab that I'd like to, to show you is called Send an Archive. I really enjoy it because I use the Archive feature a lot. If you don't turn this on, when you send a message, it's going to still be in your uh, sent mail and the, the other emails that are attached to it, for example if it's a reply, will still be in your inbox. I like to click send an archive because it removes that email from my inbox. That's how I keep track of what I still need to work on and what is finished. So when I click send an archive at this time I'm finished with that email and it helps me in my workflow. This next lab will make your mailbox look more like it did in Outlook. So if you choose to enable the preview pane, you'll see your list of messages on the left and you'll be able to click on one and then you'll see the message on the right hand side. Um, if you like that view, make sure you turn that on. Be sure to look through all of these labs and see which ones you would like to turn on. The only one that I would really encourage you to stay away from is this one right here. It's called Default Reply to All. That's probably not the default that, that any of us want. Um, it would probably create a lot of unnecessary messages, so I'd encourage you to leave that one off unless you have a specific purpose for turning it on. All right, let's go ahead and go down to the bottom and save our changes. And then let's return to our settings up here at the top. And this time, let's look at the theme setting. So here are a lot of different ways to make your email inbox look really cool. I've got mine set on the light theme right now. I really like that one. But there are lots of different choices here, including some custom themes where you can upload your own picture if you choose. So let's take a look at the light themes and then let's change the background image. So if I want a light theme and maybe I like this picture right here, I can select that and that will become the background of my email. If you want to look for more images, just keep scrolling down. If you want to upload a picture, you can do that right here and then select it. So now probably pause this video and take a minute to make your email inbox look like you want it to look. So hopefully you know enough to now begin using your Gmail account. Of course, we've just scratched the surface of what's possible with Gmail. If you want to get more help, this is a great place to do it. There are so many wonderful Gmail training pro programs online, but I really like this one. It's called the Ninja Program, and you can get to it by navigating online to www.google.com slash mail slash help slash tips dot html. Let me also remind you of that site where we started out our training and this is the Huntsville ISD site and I, I gave you a short URL for that. You might want to bookmark that if you've still got it open or I can create a new one for you here. So let me copy that and give you another way to get to it and then encourage you to bookmark it. So here is a short URL that will take you to the home page for the Huntsville ISD training materials. So it's goo.gl forward slash number two, lowercase v, lowercase w, lowercase n, number five. I would like you to bookmark that page because what we're going to do is continue updating the materials here according to your needs. So if you navigate to this page now, you'll see an email help page. You'll see the online training page where we were working today. But if you scroll down on here, if you're at home, you'll see a YouTube video right here. If you're at work, you'll have to click to watch the screencast version of the video if YouTube's blocked on your computer. Here's some information about how to get logged in if you forget, things like that. And uh, we'll continue adding to, changing, and, and making these directions better. So bookmark this page. Hope that helps you get started with Gmail, and you have a great day.